Aloha, and welcome to Talk Story with John Waihe. We have a, another interesting guest for you this afternoon. I have with me the, the candidate who is running for the at-large seat at the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. And why is that important? Well, it's important because the Office of Hawaiian Affairs was created as the vehicle to represent uh, Hawaiians in the uh, in their and their aspirations in the state of Hawaii, and so um, my guest this afternoon is Mr. Kioni Kioni Souza <laughs> Kioni Souza. See, I was like that. Kioni, <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome to my show. Kioni, um, hello, hello, please. Hello. To tell you. So tell us a little bit about the office you're running for. It's it's the at-large seat, right? Yes, correct, uh, Governor. First of all, thank you so much for having me uh, this afternoon. I appreciate the opportunity. So I'm running for the trustee at-large position. So basically at-large, um, if not uh, people don't know, it's we're representing the state of Hawaii as a whole. So not only the island of Oahu, we represent the other islands as well, the neighboring islands. And... Um, this position, you know, for me is very, very important. Uh, is the reason why I'm seeking this position is because, you know, we definitely have uh, roots on on all of the uh, uh, major neighboring islands, and uh, we spend a lot of time there as well. You know, our, our family. Uh, so you you are um, going to re re represent. Uh, so the at large seat represents the entire state of Hawaii. But yeah, uh, as I understand it, all every seat on the board of trustees for OHA gets elected statewide. It's just that your focus as the trustee may be broader for the at-large seat. Is that? Absolutely. And, and also, um, the island seats um, that are up, uh, the candidates are running for, you must be a resident of that island. Um, the at-large seat, uh, you know, going to focus on everything. But no matter what, every island can vote for each trustee seat, no matter if it's from a particular island or not. Everyone in the now, state of Hawaii can. Now, you, you live on Oahu. Oahu. On Oahu, correct. Out in okay. Did, did you uh, grow up on Oahu? Yes, I did. So I grew up uh, originally in Liliha. Uh, really? Up, uh, right <laughs> up the hill from Liliha uh, Bakery, uh, uh, Fanui Street. Uh, oh. The uh, street right below is actually uh, Kunawai and then Kunawai Pan and everything over there. So we grew up down there. Um, up there I was five years old. We actually moved out to Kapolei. My parents. Oh, were actually, really? Yeah, we actually. Um, so parents, you're actually a long time Kapolei before the villages uh, of Kapolei. Right, correct. And so we consider, like you know, the pioneers of Kapolei. My parents were actually one of the first five to actually move out to Kapolei when uh, still had sugar cane yet. You know, going to uh, all <laughs> of the, uh, Waipahu Franklin Highway, uh, no oh. shopping centers. So we've seen this uh, this place uh, really develop and uh, grow. And, and where did you go to school? Kamehameha Schools, uh, class of 2002. Oh, you, yeah, 2002. That might make you my grandson or okay. something. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But, you know, you know uh, two, well, actually, we were, when, we, when I was in the 78 Constitutional Convention and we were developing, creating uh, the Office of Hawaiian Affairs, it was our dream that young people like yourself would, would take up the mantle. So you went to Kamehameha Schools. Uh, yeah. Did you tell us a little bit about what you do now? How did you get there? You know, just your family, all of this, so that people get to know who you are. Right on, absolutely. Um, thank you. Yeah. So I right now um, I'm a, currently a uh, realtor with Coldwell Banker uh, Realty. I'm my day job. Um, I'm also an entertainer with the Grammy-nominated Nahuku Hanua, Hanua Award-winning group Nahua. Um, I'm a proud father of three, Kiki Bentley, who's nine years old. Uh, she's a fourth grader at Punahou School. My son, wow. Rick, who's six years old, he attends St. Louis School. And my beautiful baby girl, Presley, uh, she's one. Married to my wife, Mahina. My beautiful wife, Mahina, we reside out in Kapolei, like we talked about. And right. one of them, we get to go to Kamehameha Schools, right? <laughs> Hopefully, maybe. <laughs> you know, that's what we're trying for, but, you know, they're getting really good education, uh, you know, uh, at the uh, you know institutions they're at now, uh, and so we're really proud of them. 
So, um, I, uh, did you uh, where did, did you go to uh, college or? Uh, in, so I, in... I did um, Kapiolani Community College, uh, went to liberal arts, and then I started working. <laughs> oh, terrific! You know, yeah, my yeah, son, yeah. my son, who is the uh, who is a trustee now. He's a, yeah. a large trustee. He's not running right. in this election, right. but uh, he also went to Kapiolani Community College. Awesome. And uh, uh, yeah, so you're going to have some, uh, if you get elected, you'll have a fellow alumnus uh, on, right. the, uh, <laughs> on the board with you. Interestingly right. enough, um, boy, I, I tell you, uh, this is not supposed to turn out this way, but it, it's sort of leading there. Not only did I have uh, play a small uh, a role with the creation of the Office of Foreign Affairs, mm -hmm. I also built the campus. The Kapiolani Community College campus that really? was built wow. during my my tenure as governor. So, uh, you know, you you're like a product of uh, of yes. uh, kind of a life's work. So, you got three children, and you live out in Kapolei too, I yes. guess. So, now what made what made you decide to run for the office of Hawaiian Affairs? Why why is that? Uh... You know, Governor, I'm running for my community. I like to say, my family, my children. Most of all, OHA's beneficiaries. The Office of, Office of Hawaiian Affairs beneficiaries are Native Hawaiians. That right. is the focus of this organization. And, you know, I know you were a big part of, of starting uh, OHA. Uh, and the, from the very beginning, uh, 1978, the, the CONCON Constitutional Convention, uh, very, very important. And uh, I know you've seen this organization grow. Um, even though OHA has a lot of great qualities, we still can be doing more to support its beneficiaries. Well, of course, is going back to Native Hawaiians. Right. And so when you, when you go out and, oh, boy, do I have so many things to, and how do we get there, you know? Uh, let's, let's start by, uh, by continuing this particular conversation. Now, when you go out and you, uh, you meet people, I'm assuming that you talk at least somewhat to Native Hawaiian community, Absolutely. What what are some of their concerns? I mean, what are what are the issues that they they particularly care about that that, that uh, especially doing this right. now these days doesn't necessarily have to do only with COVID, but especially doing 2020. What what are Native Hawaiian pe people uh, interested in? So you know, there was a recent survey um, that OHA conducted. You know, and the top three, uh, you know, from Native Hawaiian voters, of course, the top three things that they wanted to see for the future of Hawaiians, so they wanted, wanted to see improved anyway. Um, number one, affordable housing. Number two, uh, more representation in state government, uh, more Native Hawaiian representation. And number three, uh, better management of land and natural resources. So th those were the three priorities. Um, if we're going to go to, you know, the top one, we take the top one, for example, affordable housing. You know, my background, uh, one of my top priorities anyways, mortgage education. Uh, I have a background in real estate. Um, and the thing is, it's very, very important for OHA to, you know, step up to the plate and make sure that, you know, when Hawaiians get called, for example, for a DHHL, uh, Hawaiian homelands, and they finally get called, they're on the list, they finally get called, how do we support them, you know, in becoming that first-time home buyer or, or supporting them financially in order for them to obtain the home? Um, you know, if we're going to touch on DHHL since I brought it up, um, you know, they're two separate yeah. public trusts. And right. not, Why don't you explain to people who may not know what right. they are, what the two trusts do and how they're different. Right. Okay. How they're yeah. alike. That, you know, what, in other words, what their functions. Right. Okay. Yeah. So basically, so if we're going to um, we'll touch on OHA first. So OHA, you know, I know it was set up in 1970 to basically... Um, get the ceded lands revenues, right? That's for the betterment of Native Hawaiians. That was the whole point. Um, and, you know, uh, this is going back, dating from the lands that was, you know, uh, the, to kind of right the wrongs of Native Hawaiians going back to the overthrow of the Hawaiian Kingdom, 1893. So this organization was set up and, you know, I, I knew uh, you were a part of that. And basically you guys set this up to get those ceded lands monies and kind of funnel it through programs and different things that can support Native Hawaiians. So that's yeah. what OHA is there for, the gist of it, why OHA is there. The HHL uh, is another uh, public trust, and they're basically set up, you know, uh, you know, the Hawaiian homelands, they provide housing. That is the housing uh, for Native Hawaiians, specifically for Native Hawaiians. Um, 
The thing is, right now, currently, OHA does support DHHL. Um, there's an agreement, uh, $3 million a year uh, for 30 years. Uh, so a total of $90 million that OHA um, does, they have an agreement with DHHL to support housing. So somehow, one, one of your aspirations, obviously, is to somehow improve, improve or become part of that to, to create more affordable housing on Hawaiian homelands for a beneficiary. Absolutely, absolutely. And now, you, know, you, yeah. you, you have a background uh, in housing and real estate. Now, tell me, outside of... Uh, um, you know, supporting Hawaiian homelands, which is for 50% uh, Hawaiians or, or more uh, on the blood quantum. Yeah, there are a lot of Hawaiians that maybe don't make that threshold. Right. So if you were going to get uh, elected into OHA and you, what, how would, as you see it, based on your experience, what could OHA do to make housing affordable? Right. So, you know, one of the most rewarding things for me as a real estate agent is I get to help first time home buyers. And it's, it's not only helping them get qualified, you know, through a lender or anything like that, if they don't have one, um, but basically giving them the confidence to move forward, letting them know that this is the right thing to do, showing them examples. Uh, I'm fortunate to be able to invest as well. Um, you know, my parents taught me how to kind of, how to go about doing it. But if you don't have somebody, you know, close to you that, can express those kind of things to you and show you how to do it. You know, it's going to be hard. And at, at that point, you know, the easiest thing uh, for some situations is to keep renting, you know, and as a real estate agent, right. I definitely encourage everybody buy versus rent. That, that That's a, uh, definitely uh, <laughs> the right thing to do. And so, you know, giving them the confidence from the beginning, first time home buyers, and I'm going to basically apply the same strategy to towards all house beneficiaries, show them the process, basically holding their hand. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, holding their hand all the way through the process and making them, you know, feel like they are doing the right thing and, and showing them examples of other Hawaiians and other young Hawaiians, especially who uh, have invested and who, you know, it's, it's as simple as telling them, keep a job. You have to keep a job for two years. We need to show steady income, um, you know, and, and basically, uh, like I said, holding their hands and giving them uh, do you have uh, you have uh, you, um, you have any specific kind of how, how would you create something that Native Hawaiians could buy? Right. I mean, what... Right. So right now, I mean, you know, when they bring up the term affordable housing, you know, I, I don't really like that term. But if we're gonna go uh, affordable housing, DHHL is definitely the Hawaiian the you know affordable housing set up for to help Native Hawaiians. But like you mentioned earlier, the blood quantum. So if you don't, okay. have the- uh, we're gonna take a small break, and when, and when we we're gonna take a short break now. When we we'll be back in a minute, folks, and when we come back, uh, we'll hear from Keone as to some of his ideas uh, for um, housing that people can buy. Aloha. Aloha and welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihe and our guest this afternoon, Keone Souza. Aloha. And Keone is running, uh, as we mentioned earlier, for the at large seat with the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. Now, Keone, you were right in the middle of telling us about uh, one of the best, the greatest, I guess, the greatest priority for uh, Native Hawaiians, according to a survey that uh, had been taken, 
market for affordable housing. And uh, part of the deal is for a lot of people is not knowing how to get that, you know, how to take advantage of what is offered. And so uh, we, we had just discussed the fact that you uh, have the knowledge to help them in that process. But in addition to that, are there any ideas that you might have uh, that could result in affordable housing? I mean, should the state, uh, should OHA, what, what, kind of, what kind of things can be done to make housing more affordable for a family, for your family? You know, like, what would it take for a family like yours with, uh, you know, one husband and a wife and three young children struggling to get the best education you can pay for them? What would it take to make housing affordable for families like yours outside of Hawaiian home? Right, absolutely. So I know we talked about the blood quantum earlier, Governor, and, you know, um, if you don't have that 50% and you are, you don't have the 25% even for uh, the the lessee to pass it down, uh, who is 50%, um, you know, there, there has to be other opportunities uh, created. Um, and, you know, in, in Hawaii already, it's very, very expensive. Uh, and it, it's hard to survive. I have a lot of friends and family who move off island um, because they go uh, other opportunities, uh, you know, uh, Vegas. And now I hear uh, different guys going to Tennessee and Georgia, different places where you can get a brand new home for $250,000. Right. So, you know, the, the, the thing is, we are our affordable housing, for example, Kakako, we're going to bring up Kakako, affordable housing. Um, with the affordable housing guidelines, there's a percentage of each condo, uh, uh, you know, structure that's developed down there that needs to be affordable. Um, and they start off at about 450 to 500,000. Now, on top of that, there's maintenance fees. And so you have to be able to qualify, uh, you know, in, in this day and age and this economy, and especially during the COVID and everything going on. Um, people losing jobs, it's not possible. So how do we help them at that point? You know, we definitely need to, um, it goes back to the education part. Um, it, it's holding a job for two years. It's gathering the down payment. The down payment I want to touch on because that's very, very important. Um, even though people qualify and they can qualify for affordable housing uh, within the guidelines, they sometimes don't have the down payment. Um, mm -hmm. There is uh, the opportunity to get gift letters from your parents or, or you know, a loved one or, or a friend who can support you at that point uh, to help you uh, with the process. Uh, we always explore the options uh, with our buyers. But, you know, if you don't have that, you know, how do you save? How do you go along the process? So, OHA, uh -huh, you know, they're, um, they should be spending more money. Uh, like I said, they have a, great, a lot of great qualities. They do support a lot of programs, but they should be putting more money towards the mortgage education, letting them know um, what to do. Uh, basically, like I said, teaming, them, uh, team, teaming the, the buyers up with uh, past, uh, you know, homeowners and people who are very successful in investing. And, um, you know, basically bringing people to the table who can support the cause. And uh, that's why... That's what I want to do. Well, I tell you, you know, uh, you, you mentioned also something else and that which I found very interesting. And that's the fact that your parents from very early on taught you how to invest and how to do that. Now, one of the things that I don't know if many people know is that OHA has a uh, trust fund. It's not as large as Kamehameha schools, but it is substantial. I mean, it's in the hundreds of millions of dollars. And... And so part of the job of a trustee is managing investments. So tell me what you contribute to that aspect of the trustee's job, because that's not something that you would normally hear about at a community meeting, but something we can bring to people's attention, you know, this afternoon. Right, no, no, definitely. And you know, the, 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 like you said, the, the money's in those trust funds. Definitely. So we, um, as OHA, there is investment. Uh, our investment portfolio consists of investing um, elsewhere. We, we have different investments, uh, you know, out of state. And so one solution to that, bringing it back home, investing Ooh. here, supporting businesses down here, using that monies, you know, where it counts. Um, the return on investment can be greater. Like I said, even, uh, you know, opportunities to develop, develop the land that OHA oversees. Kakako Makai. One great example, um, since OHA had possession of since 2012. You know, Kakako Makai, there's a lot of groundwork that needed to be done, uh, you know, in order to, uh, for it to be ready to build. 
And so that is one, and my recommendation, if Kakako Makai cannot be developed anytime soon, let's work on doing a land swap. Let's work on doing something that makes sense right now so that we can create revenue for our beneficiaries. And we don't have to say, this is all we can give you. You know, uh, we have to stop funding this program. You know, um, I'm going to go into the, you know, the, the our point of OHA is supposed to be, you know, funding the 20% basically of seeded lands revenues. That was the agreement. I think right now, give or take, it's about 3%, which we get every year. Uh, from right, the... and you uh, do you feel any, uh, you feel a burden to go after that? Or, or how, how, uh, how does, all, what are some of your thoughts about how, of what we should do about that? You know, the fact that uh, the OHA doesn't get what it's entitled to by right. law. Absolutely, absolutely. So I, I definitely feel going after that money is a priority. Um, it's one of my top priorities. Like I said, in the meantime, we are still going to be working on creating our own revenue. Um, you know, like I said, developing commer- uh, creating commercial properties to support Native Hawaiian businesses. Uh, we can do something like flex homes in Kakako where, um, you know, uh, two, three-story building, uh, two stories on the top is housing. The bottom floor is actually uh, a business. You can run your business. Um, Ho'opili out in Eva, they have those. Uh, Kapole, Mehana, they have a flex home. So that is definitely something um, that we should be doing on that Kakako property. That's a very interesting, very interesting point. Um, you know, one of the things about the Office of Hawaiian Affairs is that um, uh, ever since 2000, mm-hmm. with the uh, infamous, I call it, infamous uh, <coughs> um, Rice v. Caetano, U.S. Supreme Court decision that non, non-Hawaiians can vote in the OHA election. So I am sure that uh, you have talked to non-Hawaiians and they are interested in, in what the affairs of the Office of Hawaiian Affairs are. And how do you persuade them? How do you persuade a non-Hawaiian about the importance of OHA to Hawaiian, uh, to the Hawaiian people, and vice versa to the state of Hawaii. Right. Just yeah. No, no, definitely. You know, that's a that's a big important issue. Um, a lot of people don't vote. See, if they're not a Hawaiian, they choose not to vote. And uh, a lot of the companies... and we and, and they are and people can respect that. But when right. they do participate, right? Yeah. So when they do participate, you know, first of all. A lot of them are not educated on the candidates, number one. Um, second, they're not educated on what the Office of Hawaiian Affairs actually does. Um, unfortunately, a lot of uh, publicity that uh, you know the Office of Hawaiian Affairs has to deal with, uh, especially the trustees in the past, is, is negative uh, attention uh, you know, on the news and dif- uh, in the newspaper. And so people, um, you know, they kind of lose faith in the organization. They say, you know, I don't want to have anything to do with it. But they have to understand that this organization going back to uh, you know 1970 was with the goal in uh, the goal is to support Native Hawaiian beneficiaries and everyone voting out there needs to know that that is the main goal. But how does it affect non-Hawaiian voters? You know, right? By OHA supporting a Native Hawaiian business, for example, a thriving Native Hawaiian business, you know, uh, they they do well. It it relieves uh, it, it actually creates more tax uh, you know um, more tax revenue for the state. Which we are for everybody. all taxpayers. We are all taxpayers, exactly, for everyone. And so that's one big way. You know, a native Hawaiian, you know, off the streets into homes. Um, we help them along in the home buying process. You know, um, you know, we don't have to access public resources. That also relieves the strain on taxpayers. And that's just two examples that, you know, um, and I like to talk about because we can expand on that uh, as far as non native uh, Hawaiian voters. And most of the time they don't vote because it's out of respect, like you said. Um, Hawaiians also, I mean, they, they, they don't, they're not educated on what OHA does. And I think OHA kind of bringing out the, uh, the good in what OHA does, restoring the voice, restoring the confidence in the organization is what we need to do moving forward as OHA trustees. Very good. I, I, now, you know, I'm going to pivot again one more time because I am totally interested in, uh, in in getting to know you, and you, you're part of a music. Tell us a little bit about your music side. You know, right? So uh, this is uh, this is you know like every other 
Well, any there can't be any time uh, Hawaiian stock that you know you, you can only stay so long on the serious subject. So, <laughs> although music is a serious subject, I tell you, you know. But uh, let's hear. Tell me about your uh, your 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 music side of your life. So, you know, I started playing music from a very young age. Uh, my grandmother, Monoha Kaapana Medeiros, just uh, played music. And uh, of course, you know, her family, the Kaapanas, the Kolera Kaapana, and all that, that's cousins to her. Um, they were all musicians. She wasn't a professional musician. Uh, that's all your family is from Pune, then? Yes, you, yes, yeah. So they're all connected, all the same family. Exactly. All from Pune, Pune, yeah, the Kaapanas are from Pune. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it's Kaapana. And then, so my grandma actually grew up on Molokai. Oh, Molokai. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, Reverend Abraham Kapana of Kalua Aha Church uh, is actually my uh, so great grandfather. And oh. uh, so my grandmother, she started playing music from a young age. All the family parties we used to have out in Lani Kai and everything like that every summer. And, you know, I, I always thought, you know, she, I looked at her as, wow, she's a, she's a musical genius. She's a god. And not knowing that she never had an album, she never had, she wasn't ever female vocalist of the year or anything like that. But she was my grandma, and that's how my music career, uh, uh, basically, my music foundation started. And of course, uh, giving respect to Kamehameha schools from a very young age, Kamehameha Children's Chorus, going up into Concert Glee, up in high school, and just the opportunities that stem from that, you know, being able to play outside with the old timers. Um, we're talking about the old timer musicians, uh, 40 years at Outriga Canoe Club, and the Halekoa Sunday Branch, of Inzli Hale Manu, and the Teveses, and <laughs> you know, Kiko Fernandez, who passed on the gig to Uncle Inzli, and, you know, uh, Uncle Kawai Kokit, uh, who many of us know, he had that wicked, uh, strum on that ukulele. Right, 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 right. And so just, you know, the, the foundation is very, very important. That led to us being able to travel the world, uh, out, you know, outside even the, the U.S. and then traveling to Japan uh, in, internationally. And, you know, we get to explore different cultures. We see how they handle things and their approach on different issues that we are facing as well. You know, to so the music has taken me everywhere. It even took us, like I said earlier, we're Grammy nominated, took us to the Grammys. And you know, we're just, um, you know, local boys. I, I think that's fantastic that uh, you had the experience of, uh, and people ought to know that, that you were one of the nomination uh, people nominated for the the Grammys. I mean, how much bigger can you get? Absolutely. You know, well, you got the, uh, and, and, and I don't, I think anyway, that being in that kind of a discipline, uh, really molds you for life so one of the good things is um you got to know the kupuna you got to know your uh, your, your genealogy Absolutely. so i you know Keone, i do want to thank you uh we i was hoping we'd have a chance to talk more about what the difficulties of running an oha election <laughs> but uh our time is up and i and i wanted people to get to know you and hopefully uh, people will tune in, tune in to this show and uh, they will see you for uh, who you are. So right thank you. Much. Aloha, everybody. We'll see you again in two weeks. Aloha, Governor. Thank you. Aloha.